Good weekend, all. Ira Epstein of Linden Associates with your weekend edition of your Spider ETF wrap up for this Friday, the 26th of February, 2021. Now, on the weekend edition, we go weekly charts. We're not looking at the daily, giving you the longer picture. But before I do anything, I have a favor to ask. If you like these videos, please hit like when you're watching them on YouTube. If you have a comment for me, write them there. This helps me get more viewership. More viewership means I don't have to monetize this. That's not my goal. So you're helping me to help you. Is that so much to ask with a little click? I don't think so. All right. What's really going on as we look at the markets? We're changing phases. So the stocks, when we had to stay at home, be it the Netflixes, anything streaming, all the cable companies you're watching, uh, that's changing. And what's happened, not that their content isn't better, we're going to be going out soon. The market doesn't wait for the event. The market anticipates events. And as those events are changing right in front of you, companies that were doing well in the first phases of the COVID, People are rolling out of those, maybe early, but rolling out of those, and they're going into companies that they think in post-COVID are going to do well. They're all over the board. There's plenty of things uh, that people are looking at. But if you ask me what I'm thinking, that's it. What led the way down, and you know it was XLK, you know, the tech stocks, they were the first ones. Now interest rates are going up. We've seen the economic numbers. They're no better or worse than they've been recently, right? You hear the Fed, you hear Janet Yellen saying that, so you don't need me to say that. It's anticipation. And markets anticipate. They forward look. That's what you've got. Do they get it right? Sometimes. Do they get it wrong? Sometimes. Both different ways. So let's go and see what they look like right now. As we look at the tech sector, Spider, you can see that the market last week had what's called a key reversal. What is a key reversal? Let me pull this cord we got here. A key reversal is when you make the highest high of a move, take out that week's high, the week before it, and that week's low before it, close lower and under the opener ideally of that week. You had all that. You're getting follow through at this point. So that's what we have there. The pattern when I put a swing line study on, this is an indicator I wrote. So if you're looking all over the, in the internet for it, you're not going to find it. It's in the charting software packages that I offer our subscribers, our clients. It's right there for them to work with. You have higher lows, higher highs. Okay. When you watch TV, I don't care if it's Fox, CNBC, Bloomberg, the financial analysts, when they're talking charts, they're going to say, oh, the market's got a pattern of higher highs, higher lows, lower highs, lower lows. It's a code word for trend. And in this case, the trend is still up until you take out and get through 126.12, the most recent low. Everyone that I know on TV that's a chartist uses a moving average of some type. And the reason is they're looking for neutral zones, they're looking for support, resistance points on, the, on a chart. Where might a chart go? Well, on the pullback on this, the 18-week moving average of closes is, an, is what I call the line in the sand. When the market is over it, over it, I, it has an upside bias. When the market's well over it, to get breaks back to it, that is very common or attempts to do that. If it closes under it, the bias can turn down. If it flips up the next week, back over it, then the bias is back up. It's really that simple. It's a filter on other signals you might get as well. So on this chart, what we have is the market is over the 18-week average. We have had a pattern of higher lows, higher highs. The market has gone up to right in here, gotten up to the Bollinger Band. What's the Bollinger Band? It's an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within it 95% of the time. Another way of looking at it is only 5% of the time will the market stay above it or under it. Therefore, it's a, a numeric number that is generated for a resistance point. Think of it that way. That's what the algorithm does. Well, that's what you did. You got up into that zone and you've been breaking back. Okay, that makes sense. What about momentum? You've lost upside momentum. And I'd be very fearful of this. When you lose upside momentum, when a slow stochastic 
You, some of you use MACD, RSIs, I can go on and on. There's a whole slew of them. But when momentum's lost on whatever you have, markets tend to revert and go the other way. Momentum, in theory, leads price. Some people think price and volume, that volume leads or, or sets the tone for what price is going to do. We'll find out if that theory. I, I believe in what I'm saying in this. So when it turned down now, I'm looking for price to get to what? The 18-day week average of closes, not day, it's a weekly chart. And that's where I'm looking for the first attack. Now, that number, as I said, is going to be over this number of 126.12. If you take out 126.12 and you close under the 18-week, you'll have turned the momentum down and you've broken the uptrend. Will it be a downtrend? Not if you believe in the pattern that defines a downtrend. Lower highs, lower lows. So you can stop an uptrend which I think you've already done up here. You've gotten up to ranges that have stopped it anyways, but you can put it fully on pause. When I go to PAVE, which is the infrastructure, which I'm looking at, why? Because I think that right after the COVID relief bill, whatever comes of that, and it will be passed in some form, I believe, the very next thing they're gonna look at is this. The market went up, made a new high for the whole week, moved, or did it? Yeah. 23.28 was the prior high. It got over that by about 47 cents or so. It's ready to pull back. Why not? Lower and low, higher high. I get it. Momentum, are you losing the momentum? Yep, pull back, that's fine. Doesn't mean that you've changed the overall bias to the upside though in the chart. XLI. This is the industrial sector. Well, momentum starting to drift here. You closed under 79. You have an embedded reading that the first time it's lost was this. I think it's embedded. You need three weeks over 80 to have it. Week one, week two, week three. Nope, not there. Week one, two, Three, that was it, I knew you had it, and you lost it this week, but you only lost it by a half a point. Any reading over 80 keeps it, in my opinion. Therefore, if you're up this week, you can regain it. This is gonna be a rough week for these, but those are the markets you're looking at, okay? We'll see what they do by the end of the week. The energy sector, well, you're at a pretty stiff resistance point. When's the last time you hit that 100-week average? many, many long months ago. This is certainly not in 2020 that I can recall, okay? So it's the first time. What do you typically do when you hit those numbers the first time? Pros step away. They'll say, okay, we've had that bounce. Let's see what it can do. It's probably gonna play around. I'll deploy money elsewhere. Doesn't mean they're bearish. That's what often happens. So I'm looking at the momentum, still looks good to me. Do I think energy's a buy on a good break? I still see it on the chart. Forget fundamentals, I don't know the fundamentals. I know the charts. And in looking at the chart, if you fell all the way back to the 18 week average, well you would lose that upside momentum. Doesn't take a genius, and I've been around this too long to know uh, that type of break would be monstrous in its scope. I don't expect that. I expect that the market's gonna pull back and try to find a zone of support lower. QQQ, so this is the market that gave you the warning sign. This is the market on February 19th. This is the market last week. Or is it this week? It's this week. You lost the market at the end of the week in the momentum. Where's it likely headed? To the 18 week average. If you take out 295.18, you can break the pattern of higher lows, higher highs. Got it? Close under 309.38 or wherever that 18 week average is when we reopen uh, come uh, Monday. Well, it could be under it for downside bias, but it cannot turn bearish. Why? because you'd have a higher high, lower low. These are important things to know. And momentum has, for the first time since December, it has stepped away from an embedded reading. Is it a place you wanna be? You might wanna be there, that's up to you. In EFA, the emerging markets, well, we know this is a crowded trade. I don't know of a trader on TV that doesn't want to be in emerging markets. Their code word now is I'm wrong, which means we were a little early right? But they weren't that bad. The market, if you take a look from December, from actually January, market went up. It's a pullback. 
that's all. You lost your upside momentum. Let the market restructure itself. It is not throwing out sell signals on a weekly basis. It is also not throwing out a new buy signal. Gold, I have said over and over, this is a market that completely lost its way. Why? You didn't rally at the beginning of the pandemic. You didn't rally when interest rates, well, they, it did rally. It went up to $2,000, so I'm not correct in what I'm saying. It rallied and did make a new high, but nothing like a Bitcoin or the other digital currencies. It didn't do what you thought it would do. And then it faded back and gave all of that up. And in fact, now if you go to and you look from December, you're lower than you were. So it's given up the whole beginning of the year gain. You can't argue that fact, that's the reality. The high was made last summer up here. So this has not been a good play and it's in a downtrend. It's getting excessive. It's under the lower Bollinger Band and it's oversold. If it wanted to go into a full washout, you might go to the 154.24 area, but staying under that Bollinger Band, you have a tendency not to do it, as you can see as, I, as you look at months of charting action. GDX follows gold. Whatever the, is in value in the ground for the miners, well, that's it. So you're down, but do I think the pros are pressing it? No, I think they're lifting their shorts. You're gonna go, what's he saying? Well, you're down to the 100 week average in the lower Bollinger Band. Okay, you play the probability that you'll keep going down to the 200. I think the money is now, anyone that's been short, this is the zone that they're beginning to lift those shorts. SLV, the trend turned down this week. Now, this is an interesting trade because this is the Reddit traders. Boom, they kick it up. How many people got killed in that? My phone was ringing as I got my kid, not, not, not the traders that I know, but their kids. They're buying silver, it's gonna run away. They're, they're playing this SLV. I go, well, they're gonna lose. And they go, why? And I said, well, you're way over the Bollinger Band. The odds are it's gonna pull back on them. That's it. I can't tell you if where they bought it, it won't come back, but do you buy over a Bollinger Band? No, <laughs> I don't know how to make it any clearer. No, as far as I'm concerned, I'll qualify that, all right? I can only talk what I think, and that's what I think, why? Because 95% of the time it'll trade within it. That's the reason why. In treasuries, well, same flip-flop now. You're on extending it. What do I think? Well, now that you're done this, I would say the pros are looking between right where you're at and that 135.47, the 200 uh, day, uh, 200 week moving average of closes, powerful number. You came back and you finished at 143.12. During that whole break, you got back over the Bollinger Band. You do realize it. it didn't close down there, it closed back under it. Momentum starting to turn on you. This is a place where I think the pros are taking money off the table. They're not saying, oh, interest rates are going to keep going higher. I want to sell TLT. What was support for a while back here at this 100 week average should be resistance now on the way up. That's what I would think at the 149.30 level. We'll see if I'm right or wrong. In the foreign currency market, okay. Higher low, higher high bullish, but could it hold on this week? Take a look at this. This was not the play. It's because the market made the higher high that I drew the line. Where did it finish? 113.14. It negated that. It came right back and closed under it with momentum going down. Are you trending? No. You've got the bias down, the swing line up, and momentum pointing down on the chart. Jets, okay. Why is this rallying and with markets are falling? Because we're playing post pandemic. Got it? It's not the things that worked during the pandemic. It's now going in the money of things that didn't work. This didn't work during the pandemic. This is the market that came crashing down. Now the market is saying, well, I want to own these airlines or these, uh, what services, uh, the uh, terminals. I, I want to be in cheap. This is one of the things they're looking at. I'm not saying do it or don't do it. The trend is lower, low, higher, high into a big resistance area. Do I understand what's going on? A hundred percent. I get it. The DBA, this is the ag fund. This ag fund is about money flowing in because of world tightness in grains. 
That, you're in my backyard with that. Do you buy a Bollinger Band? Never. Is it embedded? Yes. So the trend, this is that super cycle that they keep talking about of grains, lumber, copper, I can go on and on. That's why you're going up in that market and you're still in a bull trend. Now that's my news, but this is how the page would look. I want to remind you, if you're looking for trade ideas to start your mornings off, I wait on the spiders and ETFs for the markets to open at 8.30 and at 8.40, I start recording for you each weekday a video that covers all 40 some odd charts on this, longer term, short term, and I'm giving buy and sell signals on the market. On Saturdays, I cover just the weekly charts for you. So I'll give you the long term charts there. This is just some of what I cover. We're way beyond that now. There's a charge for it. They're 20 minutes long on average in the morning. You can scoot right through them. I do them by sectors. $8.95 for the first 30 days. Think of this. How many brokers do you get a chance to throw an idea at? You write me. You got a question on a chart. I do write you back. It's all included in that. Can I make it simpler? $8.95 for the first 30 days. No contract with me. You decide what you want to do. You can buy a one year ahead of time and get a big discount. You can buy it uh, month by month. You're call. You do it the way that you want. Just give my staff a call or go to our website under the word research. You sign up for it right there. It explains how everything works. Remember, last thing I'm going to say, if you like this, give it a like. It takes a click. Not very much to ask. Take